really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it had to be of an international standard. Which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Yes, thank you very much. That's my crew. Very excited that we're finally at the 100th edition of Seriously Speaking. When we started in January 2014, Ultima Studios and my company, Universal Communications, we didn't realize, we didn't even know where we were going to air this show, but we knew that since Ultima Studios owned Get TV, we would be there. But then we wanted known and more established television stations to start with it. But we're just recording great content that we thought chat shows should be a little different. It's serious. But then it's fun at the same time, discussing fundamental issues that concern you. So as I do the hundredth, what better time than now to take a trip back to some of the great editions that this show has seen. we have great guests. I mean, I can't even begin to count them. Fortunately, you can find all of them on Seriously Speaking online. But I begin today's journey into the past with stories around my fatherland. Because in the past five weeks or so, you see, we've been talking about Nigeria, what it means to us, some people, being in government, not being in government. I've also talked about talent and helping others in the past five weeks. Now, this country that we all love so much, regardless of how bad things may be, there are people who struggle to get out of it every day. And that's why one of the additions I'm going to take you back to is a harrowing detail of a story of a young man who tried to go in quest for greener pastures in the diaspora. And then my friend, Honorable Abike Dabri, who was then in the house in charge of things in diaspora, was on set with this person. But the truth is, the stories were harrowing. In the same vein, people are struggling to go out. There are those who are living there and are waiting to come back home because things just aren't the way they should be anymore for them. Those are the ones who are coming back home to Niger. But then still, when they come back home, there are issues. So we have on that, homecoming. Three great additions that help you to connect a little bit more with your fatherland, our fatherland, and how we must stay here and be the best that we can be to make the vision of a better Nigeria happen. I'll take a break after this long intro and go straight into my first highlights as I celebrate the 100th edition of Seriously Speaking. I'm going to read very quickly one, one paragraph from this book. Osta, by the way, is the author of a book titled Chasing a Mirage, My Search for an Oasis. And it's based on his own true story of his journey. Actually, he ended up in Libya, I forgot. When Abike said plus two, it's it. I remember that you called your sister. I was sister. on my way to Europe. You were on your way to Europe. Libya was just, most people going that way, they're on their way to see, Europe, isn't it? See Tripoli, see Italy. See yeah, Tripoli, going see to Italy. Europe. Through Libya. Yeah, everybody in Libya is on transit to Europe. That's what it turns out to be. Uh, they're all stranded in Libya. Let me read this. I need to drink something or I will die. A man jumped out of the truck, turned to corner, and he opened his zipper and he urinated into his jerry can. Hmm. He brought his jerry can to his mouth and began to gulp hungrily. From the back of the truck, we watched his face, coveting the relief that flooded his eyes and the peace and calm that seemed to pervade his being. I looked away. This was repulsive. But I needed to drink something, anything, and I didn't care what it was. Many travelers jumped up from the truck and began to follow his lead. I urinated into my jerry can. It was barely much, but I closed my eyes and drank it. It had no taste. There was no time to savour its taste. I was trying to survive. After we discovered an alternative source to water, we received some strength. We realized shortly, however, that men didn't produce as much urine yeah. as women did. Yeah. And the men had to appeal to the women to share. I pleaded with Ada and Ngozi, and they shared some of their urine with me, which I passed on to Temi. Temi. It was sickening. But if this was how we were going to survive, then it was a price we were going to have to pay. Wow. That actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> Now you're fresh and looking very nice. Yeah, but I'm okay. told urine is good to drink. I'm yeah, but if you've, never, if you've never <laughs> used it... That, that is on a very... <laughs> so, when you are sick, yes. uh, you, you know. But uh, at that situation... You were, where, where were you? 
I was in desert, in the wow. midst of, that is uh, very far north. Mm -hmm. Towards um, close your eyes and imagine that time. Towards, uh, it's a terrible scene, but um, well, maybe as time goes on, you will see my expression. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know um, because um, we we came to a situation where we had no choice. That was the only option. Well, I find this you know. pathetic, but you know, there you were, you were a graduate. Yeah, you you were you had two arms and two legs. Where were you going? Yeah, I actually did some good business in Nigeria that I introduced myself to, but flopped because there was no backup. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the point of frustration, uh, then I was in Benin. You know, uh, then at that point in time in Benin, what is obtainable okay, then well, okay, is okay, okay, Europe, okay, okay. Europe, 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 mm -hmm. you know. And the opportunity came as in somebody sold it to me that, uh, ah, why... Your business is flopped. Go to okay, this, just, that is, that is Lampa Lampa. I read about uh, that. At, the, at this point, the, the Zuara. Zuara is a point in Tripoli where you cross through the Mediterranean Sea. What was happening here? Why is that? That was a point. I keep, this is a point in Agadez, from Agadez to Duruku, where we're traveling in the night. You know, these, wow. are, these are migrants from Nigeria. From, the, the pictures are not very good, but at least it yeah, shows that it was a Yeah, but it has audio, audio, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you know. So, you know, it is a, it is a terrible situation. And um, the point I left, actually, was when they said it would be easy for me. So I, that story about seeking greener pastures is correct? Yeah, it's very correct. Highly correct. And it's still existing. Even as I'm talking to you, people are moving. This was in what year? It happened 2003. 2003? Yeah, 2003. You now decided. But I, what I found interesting was all the efforts you made... Once you got to the airport, getting ready to fly, somebody had made you pay what? I'm tell yeah, me about that, it. That's, oh, they, they've taken it off. I want to show you how we were in the truck uh -huh. when we were living. That is in, uh, in, in the desert. In yeah. the desert. Mm. Was that in Kano or? No, no, this is a desert. Okay, okay, okay. This is a desert. This was, My goodness. Yeah. There's a heap. My oh, goodness. People. Yeah, these are, these are human beings. Yes. Trying to cross. Yeah, we're Europe going to Europe. Desert. That is the jerry can. We normally we call it bidon. Yeah. We bought it 25, 25 liters, mm -hmm. but uh, normally you, it won't, you can't, even, can't even sustain you. Because like myself, I spent 91 days in the desert before I got to my destination. So how much, how much jerry can did you carry? I, I took two, 50 liters. 50 liters, 25, 25, then one four liters, the one you will carry. Yes. And maybe if there is any breakdown in the truck, mm -hmm. you can trek with that. So smaller. what's happening here? Okay, this is These are stranded migrants at uh, Duruku. The, is Duruku in Nigeria? Duruku is a camp very far in the desert. These people here, they can't... Sahara Desert? Yes. They can't move forward, they can't come back. Limbo. <laughs> and a lot of them died before they get there. A lot, lot I, a lot of people died in my group. A lot. And I read about group. it in your book. And I, I found, yeah. while, I, while I, I, I read it and I laughed, I cried... But I felt that there's something Nigerians have to know while you're seeking. I mean, look at the interesting stories of Nigerians who are successful abroad. Yeah. Why must we choose this route? Why, must, why did you decide to write this book? I, it's lack of information. I had three options, actually. This was my last option, but good, God took over. The first option was to become a trafficker. Oh, we, we are Yeah, in the, in the desert. I, I, when I was coming, I was so pained with all the experiences, and, uh, you know, I felt that uh, all was. Why should I go through all this? It's a lucrative business. Yes, you know. And I found out that people are dealing on this. The way people trade on cars, the way people trade on, on books, the way people trade on, you know, different trades. People, is daily business for some people. They trade on people. Mm -hmm. They canvas people. They carry them abroad. And they were doing it. They call themselves buggers. I was seeing them on the, in, you know. Bugger like, like in B-R-U-G-E-R-S or? Yeah, G-E, uh, and, and then with G-E-R. Okay. Mm, you understand? So I now found, I said, ah, this is a business that people are, so boy, there's money in it. And you, you make more money when you carry young girls. You make more money when you carry ladies. Men, uh, you just take them there, abandon them, they can die, turn them, they can be drug peddlers, you know? You know? So I said, ah, okay. Then the second option was, because of the treatment I got from these Arab, um, Arabian Police. police and mm -hmm. soldiers, you know, the way, the way they were handling us. And I said, I said, don't you think I should have a gang that will start killing 
the white people. I'm just telling you the kind of situation you'll be in this if, country. Yeah, if you are stranded in this. Then the third one was I said, okay, I think the, what the next option is, or the best option is, for me to stop this trend in Nigeria. This is crazy. Then I two, this... I, I needed to document it, then put it in a movie. But you know, support. There is no support. But it I said, <laughs> I said, I must do it. And since I came back, actually, you know, we've been on it, we've been on it, and tried as much as possible. Because I found out that 90% of Nigerians that move out to Europe go through the desert. I did a training recently with the Switzerland returnees. You know, I did a mentorship training for them. Some people have spent 15 years, 10 years, 20 years in Switzerland. They decided to return back. They call them um, assisted, assisted voluntary returnees uh, reintegration. So they, they were in jail there? No, no, no. They decided to come back. They're oh, being, really? they're being fund, uh, is, um, the Swiss government funds it. Mm -hmm. you know? Those who seek asylum. Yeah. Okay. So, you don't get them, they now bring them back and actually give them some money, train them, yeah. and give this, them money. This is a survivor. To, to, mm. to, oh, my you know? God. This so, is in the desert? Yeah, in the desert. So what I did, what we, what we, I now found out that half of them that came back from Switzerland were actually people that went through the desert. Oh, so people make it through that. Yeah, a, a few people make it. Few people make it. Not all. Die. Not all. But you must have suffered. You must have, you know, mm. if you want to make it, you would have decided that it is better you die on the trip than coming back. But I, for you, when I saw the materials. I said, I don't have to go through this. <laughs> when I remember that I, I was actually a king before I left, because Nigeria. When you say king, what does that mean? I was actually a king in Nigeria because uh, with what I went through, I didn't have to pass through that. Yeah, but why, but why did, did you, you do it? To go through the desert. I, I didn't. Europe, I didn't know I was through. going to, through the desert. That's true. The story says. I didn't know. But you knew you were going as an illegal immigrant. No, I. The idea was I had my passport. They sold. They collected it from me. Somebody sold the idea. An easy way to go. I, but you couldn't even fly. Visa. No. <laughs> it's tell a, us it's a story. A, it's, a, it's a long story. But tell us a story. I'll tell you. Shorten it. Okay, the first attempt I made was through the Montana Airport to the UK. There was a visa, but it was a fake visa. Because you paid for the visa. I paid for it. Exactly. So that's the issue. And there was a visa. I, I, was, a, I was to... I had five minutes to board. I came in with boldness to the airport that I was going to UK. I said bye-bye to your yes, family. I walked in to check in. The next thing was, ah, please, oh, what is this? You should wait for the British High Commission. The, uh, commission. I said, what? <laughs> British High Commission? So what's my business with British High Commission? He said, you should, well, I don't have any business with you. Let another person come in. Ah. Say what? So I knew there was a problem. But I didn't know how to handle the problem because that was actually my first time. You know? But a savior was one of the security agencies. I saw the way I played with them when I was coming in. Now, called me. Gave me a sign. I came out. He said, young man, you have to leave this place. There's a problem. I said, which problem? Say said, there's a problem. Go. So that was how I left. I abandoned that trip. But then I was devastated. Well, sir, you had spent how much at that time? I said, then I spent about 250000 So yeah. that was down the drain. That was down the drain. You know, how how to... much was the visa you paid for? Everything I gave for the visa was about 250000 So why didn't you go apply normally for a visa? Ma. I was not informed then in terms of traveling. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. So, and all, Nigerians, I knew, all I knew was some people, some people can assist you to get a visa. And, and it's what is happening out. now. And it's still happening. Go to Ikeja, you will see under the bridge. Mm. Visa made easy. Qatar, 200,000. Um, <laughs> China. So I'm, I'm telling you, you see, we lack information in Nigeria and we hide information. You know, it was this experience that made me to understand that a lot of Nigerians are dying in silence.